On September 8, 2023, my beloved stepped into heaven. Mylon was a wise man, and he made sure we had months of shows filmed in advance in the most beautiful locations in the world, just like you're about to see. Please understand these were the messages he wanted you to hear before he crossed over. That's how important you were to him. As you receive the truth today, be encouraged by Mylon's example. He fought the good fight. He finished his race. And until his final moment on this earth, he kept the faith. He stayed on that road to freedom all the way to heaven. And now he is eternally free. Hi, my name is Mylon LeFevre, and music is in my blood. I got my first big break when Elvis Presley recorded a song I'd written at 17 years old. I toured the world and played with some of the biggest names in music and almost died from a drug overdose. Something had to change. Everything did change when I gave my life to Jesus at a second chapter of Acts concert in 1980. Now, years later, my wife, Christy, and I traveled the globe proclaiming God's goodness. So come on and join me on the road to freedom. Welcome to On the Road to Freedom. You've joined us on gorgeous Lake Travis in Texas, oh, our home state of Texas. Come on. We believe this is God's country. We really enjoy Texas. It's a great place. I'm from here. Mylon's originally from Georgia, but you've been here long enough that we've adopted you. You can yeah, officially yeah. say you're I've a been, Texan I'm, now, right? <laughs> I've been here, what, 30 years? Yeah, yeah, you have. Yeah. So we're thankful to be in our home state. This is such a blessing. God gave us beautiful weather. Yesterday was pretty hot, but today we've got a cool breeze and we're enjoying all the boats and, some trees. and the wave runners. And the, wow, it's just been gorgeous today. The scenery is amazing. Oh, man, You're gonna see like, some beautiful birds. And and the boats keep going by and the jet uh -huh. skis. And I mean, every once in a while I wanna haul it down the lake, give it, yeah. get a little juice, you know, but. <laughs> yeah. So today, we hope you're having a good day. We're thankful that you joined us. Why don't you let your friends and family know about On the Road to Freedom? We'd love the opportunity yeah. to be a blessing to them That's because right. the reason why we do this show is for you. It's all about you. That's what On the Road to Freedom is for. We want you set on your road to freedom. Yeah. So how can we pray for you? You can contact us at prayer at mylon.org. We have a prayer team ready to stand by and pray faith-filled prayers for you. And if you're watching right now, this is no accident. No. Today is a divine appointment. That's right. We have a word from heaven for you for right now, a word in due season a right word at the right moment. So get ready, get in faith with us. We believe that your life is about to change and be set free. Amen. It's a profitable word. It's a, yeah. it's a valuable word. Mm -hmm. I mean, we noticed in our lives, there was lots of things we were doing about Christian, our Christian, and about our walk, and music and teaching, etc. But there was one thing that always had the most value in our life, mm -hmm. and when we studied the, the word, word, when we really thought about it, meditate on it, and and read the word of God to each other, and yeah. and thought about, boy, Amen. that is really, if I do that, I don't know how much how I'd get better. I don't know. I just take God's word for it and by mm -hmm. faith. I do it because He said. If you continue my word, you'll be my disciples. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's the purpose of this show, isn't it? John 8, 31 and 32, where yeah. Jesus said, If you continue in my yes. word, you'll be my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. That's right. So that's why we study the word every day, and that's why we do it for you. We do this at home, whether you're watching or not. Mm -hmm. This is our lifestyle. This is what we do. This is who we are. Yeah, I mean. You know. It's not religion to us. That's right. It's my relationship with God Almighty. In His presence, 
there is fullness of joy. Man, he gives, gives us joy. Yes, he Unspeakable does. Unspeakable and full of glory. That's right. Every day is a good day, isn't it? Good? Every day is Every a good day, day. A good day. We with rejoice. Jesus, right? That's exactly. what we need to add to that. Every day is a good day with Jesus. Right. And you know, t uh, Team Milan, we want to thank right. you. You're helping us to take this word to the nations, to the multitudes in the valley of decision, because Jesus is coming soon. So you're helping us to tell the world how good God is yeah. and how much he loves them. Amen. So we want you to stay encouraged today. We're talking about the fruit of the spirit, gentleness. And I'm so excited about this particular fruit. When I studied this out, there is so much to gentleness that I did not know. Yeah. Wow, it's so good. So get ready, get your notepad, get your iPad, get ready to take some good notes. This is gonna be wonderful today. Life changing, I believe, in Jesus' name. You know, Mylan's preaching on the fruit of the Spirit has impacted my life tremendously. He's been teaching on this for years and I love the way he explains it. He says the fruit of the Spirit is the personality of Jesus. That's right. Did he? I mean, think about it. Love, is his joy. Yeah. Galatians 5, 22 and 23 says the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, kindness, gentleness, faithfulness and self-control. Come on. Well, that sounds like Jesus to me. How about you? And we're I'm called to be you. a reflection of him in the earth. We're called to be like Jesus, to be transformed into the image of the Son of God. So we need to be bearing fruit for his glory. We don't need to be religious. Now, this is what I love about the fruit of the Spirit that I learned from my honey, is that when you bear the fruit of the Spirit, it will keep you from being religious, yeah, well. right? We've all known those Christians that they may talk in King James, but they're just harsh and hard and yeah. curt. They're not patient. They're and rude. Kind. Right. God is love and love is, is not rude. That's right. Love is not rude. So, and there's no excuse. You can tell me, oh, but it's complicated. No, it's not. You either obey or you don't. Mm -hmm. You either say, yes, Lord, mm -hmm. and he is your Lord. Right. Or you say, no, Lord, and he, you're your Lord. Right. So you, then you got to fight the devil by yourself. Mm. You will lose that fight every time. Yeah. Because you're proud and you think, I got this. Oh, don't do it, people. Please don't do it. It'll hurt you, baby. Don't do that, man. Get, get before God. Humble yourself. And do what he tells you to do, and you'll come out the victor yes. every time. So the fruit of the Spirit, gentleness, is defined as, in the Webster's 1828 Dictionary, which is founded on Christian principles, it says gentleness is softness of manners. Oh, I like that. Yeah. Mildness of temper. Yeah. Sweetness of disposition. Yeah. Meekness. It means tenderness. Wow. Now, how many of you know that's the opposite of what we're seeing modeled in the world around us? That's the opposite of the culture that tells us you need to tell it like it is. You need to put them in their place. You need to be obstinate, defiant, harsh and hard and curt. Don't let anybody walk on you, right? You're nobody's doormat. Exactly. That is the opposite. That attitude and mindset is the opposite of gentleness. Gentleness is a softness of manners. It's a mildness of temper and sweetness. So this is a choice that we make. First Timothy 6.11 says, so man of God pursue righteousness. Now this is men or women of God. Pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, perseverance, and gentleness. Pursue being gentle. This is a choice that we make again not God, right? Well, God's already made the decision. Yeah. And told mm -hmm. us to do it. Yeah. Now, you can't pray and ask God to do it for you. God said, you do it. This is your choice. You don't have to. Just like everything he tells you, you don't have to worship him. You don't have to yeah. love him. You don't have, you have to, to do trust any? him. Yeah, that's right. You don't have to do anything. God doesn't make you. It, it wouldn't be real worship if you didn't have a choice. Mm. And so God wants yeah. you to give you an opportunity That's good. to be a man of, of gentleness, yeah. a gentleman. A gentleman. Uh -huh. yeah. That's right. Colossians 3 and 12 says, and the NLT is, I really, really like this. Mm -hmm. Since God chose you to be the holy people he loves, you must clothe yourselves with tenderhearted mercy, 
kindness, humility, gentleness, there it is, mm -hmm. and patience. Yeah. God said holiness is when we choose to be merciful and kind. Whole Hallelujah. denominations have taught that holiness is the type of clothes you wear, but how you style how your you, hair. Right, or how you, you wear know, your hair. Yeah. You, you do, will you want to wear a suit and tie and speak in King James? They, they'll let you be in their club. But that has nothing to do with Jesus mm. and nothing to do with God. This is God's personality. Yeah, yeah. Holiness is, is a lifestyle. Holiness, we should be holy because He is holy. Right. I mean, this verse just really, it surprised me because God is actually saying, God chose you to be holy, so you need to put on this kind yeah. of behavior. Mercy, be merciful, that's holiness. Be kind, be humble, be gentle and patient. That's God's definition of holiness. Whereas we all know growing up, like you said, it was a, a majority, a large majority of the denominations. It's all about the clothes you wear or the, how you wear your hair. But no. th that is not God's definition of holy. It has nothing to holy. do with holy. Holy yeah. is doing the right thing for the right reason because you love God. Right love in him and trust him enough to obey him. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, you call me Lord, but you won't obey me. Yeah, that's good. That's not Christianity. Christianity, if you want to be a Christian, then do what the Christian, if you want to be a Christian, that's what Christian means. Mm -hmm. If you want to be like the Christ, then be like him. Mm -hmm. Do what he says and follow him, be his disciple. That's good stuff. Yeah. So we're bearing the fruit of gentleness. Amen. We are. Look the, at that reward. The reward Amen. of gentleness. Hallelujah. Numbers 12 and verse 3 in the Amplified says, Now the man Moses was very meek and gentle. He was kind gentle. and humble. Yeah. Or above all the men on the face of the earth. If there is a prophet among you, I, the Lord, will make myself known to him in a vision and speak to him in a dream. Right. But not so with my servant Moses. I speak with him face to face. Hmm. You know, if I'm not mistaken, he, that's the only one he ever did that with. Yes, I believe so. He, he spoke because Moses is so humble. Wow. Face to face, even plainly and not in dark sayings. And he sees, he sees the form of the Lord. He saw the form of the Lord. And lived. Wow. He didn't see him face to face. God's word says you can't and do that. And what did he do to gain this great reward? It he says he was the most himself. gentle man on the planet. The most kind, the most humble. Are you starting to see the reward of the fruit of the spirit, gentleness? Wow. Yeah. And that's powerful. I want to take a few moments to thank you, Team Milan, for your generosity and for your loving kindness. I love how James 1.27 reads in the Passion Translation. True spirituality that is pure in the eyes of our Father God is to make a difference in the lives of orphans and widows. And that's exactly what you've done for me. You made a difference in my life. From walking through the past few years of our fight of faith, to my beloved Mylan stepping into heaven. Your countless emails, letters, phone calls, and texts encouraged me that I'm not in this alone and more than words can express. Thank you. Just as you've made a difference in my life together, we will continue to make a difference in the lives of people all over the world. And if you're not a partner and you'd like to join us in ministry, go to Mylan.org and connect on Team Mylan. We're committed to praying for you. With our anointed prayer team, please be encouraged how much you are loved, honored, and appreciated. Ruth 2.20 explains the blessing of the Lord for those who show kindness to others by honoring their loved ones who've departed. And I'd like to speak that blessing over you right now. May the Lord bless you for showing kindness to me as well as to Mylan. Thank you for loving Mylan and thank you for loving me. Be encouraged in Christ. Our best days are always in front of us. They're never behind us because the path of the righteous gets brighter and brighter as the noonday.
and another reward of gentleness. We're just letting you know there's great reward yeah. when you choose to bear the fruit of gentleness. And this, in Proverbs 15, 1, it lets us know that gentleness stops strife. A gentle answer turns away wrath. But a harsh word, that means you decide, nope, I'm going to put them in their place. Yeah. A harsh word stirs up anger. Yes, it does. So we don't want to do that. We want to choose gentle answers. Amen. And I know this is going to take self-control, right? When someone is uh, telling you off, the flesh always wants to put someone in their place, right? Someone, the flesh always wants to fight back and defend, or right? Be or be sarcastic. Or be sarcastic. That's right. How many times have you heard, yes, dear? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's a submitted. That's not a gentle uh, answer. I'll submit you as Unless you say it with a good attitude. Yeah, I know. That's I've right. Tried. I'm trying. I am learning. <laughs> I had to learn this right. So when you say, when I talk about a gentle answer, what Mylon is saying is you don't want to be fake about this. You know, I've been around some people and I can tell when they're, when they're answering their mate, it's in sarcasm, right? It's not a true gentle answer that turns away wrath. And that's between you and the Lord. The Holy Spirit will show you that's just a motive of the heart. So I'm not talking about a um, insincere, fake answer that may be the right words, but with the wrong attitude. I agree. Right? I agree. So I encourage you to try this next time when you're on the verge of a potential discussion with your mate. Oh, discussion. <laughs> There's that yes. word again. She's so gracious. She calls a fuss a discussion. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it can, mm -hmm. it can turn into just discussion. But, you know, we've practiced this. It should be. Yeah, we've practiced this, haven't we? Yes, we And have. it really works. Yeah. When we, we both choose. Out, but it's, yeah, we're teasing right now a little bit because yeah. we want to keep this lighthearted. But the word works. Yeah. And so when we both have cho chosen a gentle answer, it puts a stop to the devil trying to create strife in your home and stop That's the right. power of your agreement. Proverbs 15, 4 says, A gentle tongue with its healing power is a tree of life. When you answer and speak with gentleness, you minister life to the person who, who is hearing your words. Life, remember death and life are in the power of the tongue and they that indulge in it shall eat the fruit of it for good or bad. So when you're ministering gentle words, you are speaking words of life. But willful contrariness in it breaks down the spirit. Someone who's a smart aleck, mm -hmm. Someone yeah. who's uh, sarcastic, someone who's curt, it says here, breaks down the spirit. That yeah. discourages a person. It it's does. not funny. It is not funny. To me, it made right? fun of. No. So we laughing need to... Laughing with you is different than laughing at, at you. you. Yes. Okay. So you just let the Holy Spirit minister that to you. You know, he's, God is our judge, right? Yeah. And, and you are his servant you know, not ours, right? So when we minister these truths to you, we're telling them to you because God's uh, speaking them to us, right? The Holy Spirit's bringing it up in our hearts and constantly we keep that in check. This is all about the love walk. Yeah, so yeah. bearing the fruit of the Spirit, gentleness, when Mylon, when we were dating, I remember he would minister these gentle words to me. And you know, I had not been around a man before who was a man's man, but also gentle, a true gentle man, gentleman. And I was in awe of my husband. I mean, just in awe. And he would minister these gentle words to me that brought such healing. Remember this says a gentle tongue with its healing power. And I just had some areas in my past that I didn't even know that I needed to be healed from, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. I didn't even know I had hurts. We both did, baby. That, right, but your gentleness ministered such life and healing it to was me. The, it's the gentleness of God. It, yeah. it's, it's His Spirit. It's His, it's his Spirit. It's the part yeah. that He produces. But He started doing that for me when I was brand new in the Lord, and I didn't, I was 35. I just got born again. I'd been 20 years taking drugs every day and and it's just that my whole outlook toward 
you know, I just didn't, I was deceived. Mm -hmm. And the things looked so different than they really were in the spirit, yeah. if I would trust God. Yeah. And he's what he said, I would read his word. And his word has no, um, it has no discouragement in it. No, that's there, He true. never vents. He never fusses. <laughs> he doesn't say any discouraging words. No, he doesn't. He see. only gives life. Mm -hmm. and he only gives encouragement. He only builds you up. Yeah. Even when you're sick, he says, if you'll say, you're not weak, but it, it, you're feeling weak. But if you'll say, say, I'm strong, I'm strong. it'll make a difference. Yeah. You'll notice in a few days you're getting stronger Amen. and stronger and stronger and so on. Yeah. So his way of doing things, but it's full of life, it's full but it's of life. not normal. No. So now this is not normal. No, yeah, that's no. Right. When you imagine not to all the my flesh. friends that I used to get loaded <laughs> right. with, yeah. and I got born again, I started telling about Jesus. Now I start in my conversation, I was saying things that are not as though they were because it just seemed like what I was supposed to be doing uh -huh. mouth. They didn't know what was going on. They just thought, man, this guy's become a religious fanatic. Well, you know what? I am. Mm -hmm. I'm a fanatic for Jesus. I believe that his word is the truth. Man, I want to speak it 24 hours a day. Amen. So we have to be intentional about bearing the fruit of gentleness. Yes, this is not natural do. to the flesh or to the natural man. You are a spirit, you have a soul, and you live in a body. And your flesh is always going to want to put someone in their place, right? But gentleness, the fruit of the Holy Spirit, gentleness will be kind and tender-hearted. Our witness, this affects our witness. Philippians yeah. 4, 5 says, yeah. let your gentleness be evident to all. Yeah. The Lord is near. Jesus is coming soon, and you being a gentle person, should be known by all. Yes. So would others describe you as being, being gentle? How would others describe you? Just think about it. Ask your mate, they'll tell you. Oh, <laughs> they'll tell you. take it easy. <laughs> Don't tell them all at once. You know? or, or your family, your family will tell you the truth, oh, yeah. right? But how would others describe you? This was good for me. You know, when I asked the Lord to help me in this area, you know, being a Texan, don't mess with Texas, that's a real attitude here. And yes, so there's is. a part of pride that comes in when you've got the attitude, don't mess with me, I'll put you in your place. That is not gentle. So this gentleness is a, something we've got to allow the Holy Spirit to lead in. We've got to be teachable and we've got to humble ourselves. First Peter 3.15, it says, But in your hearts revere Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. But, okay, we're always ready to be bold, to speak the truth. But do this with gentleness, yeah. the Word says. Mm -hmm. Do this with respect. So now more than ever, yes, we need to be bold and speak the truth. But according to this verse, we need to deliver it with gentleness. The Amplified says we need to deliver it courteously. Love again is not rude. Telling it like it is, keeping it real, is not being gentle. Not if you're using those terms for an excuse to be harsh, to be curt, to be sarcastic. That is not God's way. God's way is gentleness. We deliver the word with gentleness. So, Mylon, isn't that just like Jesus? Exactly. That's who we want to be like. Amen. That's who we want to be like. Amen. More of Jesus, less yeah. of me. That's it. Amen. Take my yoke upon you, Jesus said, Matthew eleven twenty nine. Mm. And learn of me, for I'm gentle, I'm meek, I'm yeah, humble, yeah. lowly in heart, and you will find rest. rest. Oh, glory to God, man. Rest in the Lord. Mm -hmm. Relief and ease and refreshment and recreation. Yeah. Ha-ha. And blessed quiet for your soul. Mm. Blessed quiet. Yeah, blessed quiet. Ooh, come on. Ooh, I'll take good. some of that. For mm -hmm. your mind, will, and emotions. Jesus yeah. said, learn of me. Mm -hmm. Gentle choices. Rest. Think about it. When we all get worked up, it's exhausting. Yeah, think about it. I mean, Jesus said, learn of me. If you're going to be like Jesus, Jesus said, this is how I am. I am gentle. And when you do, when you make gentle choices, you find rest. Mm. Now more than ever, we need rest 
for our mind, our will, and our emotions for our soul. And it can stop the chaos immediately. Yes. One word of gentleness. One word can can change it all. When you're right in the middle of a discussion. So good. That's it, though. That's good, honey. Amen. Amen. He's coming soon. Say this with me. Jesus is coming soon. Jesus is coming soon. I let the fruit of gentleness have its perfect work in me. I let the fruit of gentleness have its perfect work in me. That I may grow up and be the gentle person. That I may grow up and be the gentle person. God has called me to be. God has called me to be. Hallelujah. Oh, glory Jesus. to God. Hallelujah. I believe God's doing that work in you right yes, now. I do too. That revelation has come to glory you God. concerning the fruit of gentleness. Yes, Lord. And if you want to learn more about this, I encourage you ladies to check out my book for women called The Gracious Woman. I discuss throughout the book how the Lord taught me to make gentle, gracious choices and the reward that came to my life as a result. And by the way, I want to say a, a incredible reward has come into my life since oh, you made that decision. Thank amen. you. Amen. Oh, amen. I'm so proud of you for going up. Well, you know, and graciousness is for men and women, right? Well, we sure. just read about Jesus. So thank you for that, honey, that you've always been a gracious, gentle example for me to glean from and to look to. Thank you for that. Well, Jesus is the lion of the tribe of Judah. He can take care of business if Mm -hmm. he needs to. Yes. But he prefers to be the Lamb of God. Yeah. He's both. He'll be your Lord, your Savior, your Master. But he can take care of you. He's no wimp. Mm -hmm. He can be as strong as anybody wants to get. He can play hardball if if somebody wants to. Yeah. That's right. If you'd like to hear this teaching over and over again, an easy way to do that is to check out our podcast and get the Word for the Week on the go or our Church on the Run daily digital devotional. It's how On the Road to Freedom began. Those are wonderful resources for you to stay in the Word because we know that's what will keep you on On the the Road road to to Freedom. Freedom.